Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, I wanted to do a little bit of guitar repair. This is a Mex Fender made, made Mexico Telecaster. The action on this guitar is just a little bit too high, meaning the strings in relation to the fretboard are too far away, making the guitar just a little bit difficult to play. So I'm going to go through the process and how I kind of evaluate diagnosing this kind of a fault and what I can do to fix it. If you're interested in that, stay tuned. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so step one is to take a little bit of inventory of what's going on here with the guitar. Now, as I said, the action is too high. But if I try to play here, kind of in this maybe 7 to 12th fret area, it just feels like there's a lot of space to press the string down. However, when I get up here, it's kind of the notes are choking out a little bit. So to me, that means that if I flip the neck this way, there's too much of a bow like this. It's like a smiley face. Because over here, the strings are too close. Over here, the strings are too far away. So we've got a curve. So let's just think a little bit about how to solve this. With a guitar neck, there are really kind of four main places that you can adjust. A couple are easier and more accessible than others, but there really are four. The first one is the neck pocket. You know, do you have the neck uh, installed in this pocket flush, or do you put any shims? You can put a shim kind of right about here that's going to kick the neck pocket up, or you can kick it, put it back here on the back side that's going to kick the neck pocket down. Now that's more of like a semi-permanent, uh, not, not an adjustment that you're going to make easily. It's going to require taking the neck off, the strings off, a little bit of a hassle, and maybe not the first place that I would look to go, but more of like a fine tune. If I can't use my other main adjustment points, then I'll maybe come back to this. The second is right here at the nut. How deep are the nut slots? Now again, this does have an effect on the action of the guitar across the fretboard, but really it's not something that you should be looking to mess around with very much. This really should be set so that the action plays well here at the, at the open strings and at the first, second, third fret. You really just want to be setting this and forgetting it so that it's set up correctly here at the base, the, the first part of the guitar. Then number three is obviously the truss rod. The truss rod is a little metal rod that runs underneath the fretboard inside the neck and as you tighten it or loosen it, it causes the neck to, if you tighten it, it causes the neck to pull this way against the strings. If you loosen it, it allows the tension of the strings to pull the neck harder. That is definitely something that you maybe should consider ch checking to see if that's set correctly maybe a couple times a year. It really depends on the the climate that you live in. If you have a lot of change in the seasons or change in humidity and temperature, you might need to change this more often. It also maybe depends on the wood that's used in the neck. I've had certain necks with certain types of wood that tend to be extremely stable and I just kind of set it and forget it for years. And I have others that require a little bit more attention. So it, it really just kind of does depend. Then the final point of adjustment is here at the saddles. These bridge saddles have little Allen screws that can pull it up or down. And that is probably the easiest and most flexible place to adjust. It's easy to adjust with the guitar tuned up and, and to pitch and all that. And it requires, you know, it's very, very simple and straightforward to do. So I'm going to focus not so much the nut slots are fine. I, I don't think that the neck pocket needs to be shimmed. So I'm going to be focusing on the truss rod and on these uh, saddle adjustments. Okay, so this next thing is a technique called sighting the neck. I'm going to try to show this to you as best I can. What I'm doing is I set the guitar on the ground at my feet. And I'm looking at this low E string. And I'm using that as a frame of reference for what straight or flat is. Because I know from this point to where it contacts the bridge saddle, it's going to run from a straight line because it's a string. And using that as my reference for what straight means, then I kind of look back and forth, I look at the string, then I look at the neck. And I'm looking at the 
neck to see if there is any curve relative to the straightness of the string. And I can see there is a gentle but gradual curve running all the way around the neck. And so sighting the neck in that way really gives me my first clue. The second thing that I want to do is if I push down, or I could even use a capo here at maybe the first or second fret, and then I also push down up here, maybe at the 17th fret, and I'm just going to use my eyes to look here in this middle area, and I'm looking this way to see how much space is there. I've even got a little piece of paper here, and as I do that, I can kind of use my thumb here to push down on it, and that tells me if I've got a lot of space, that's too much. And from what I can see, if I try to tilt it up so you guys can see it as well, in my estimation, I've got too much space in there. So that so those two tests really tell me that this neck has way too much relief and what I need to do is straighten out the truss rod a little bit. Now in order to straighten out the truss rod I'm going to use these Allen wrenches. These Allen keys are perfect for this job. So um, basically what I do is I think there is a standard spec for a guitar uh, but I just have a variety pack here and I'm going to start taking the Allen keys and inserting them in here and, and, and going through until I can find one that's a good tight fit. So I've been having a hard time finding an Allen key that's going to fit in here. And so what I did is I just took my phone and I turned the flashlight on. And as I sight down in there, it looks to me like there's some maybe debris or just kind of crud inside there that's making it hard for the correct size Allen wrench to fit correctly. So I'm going to try to clean that out a second. All right, I did some research and uh, the internet tells me that a 3 16th sized Allen key is the correct size for Fender. It also tells me that when you put it in, okay, so a 3 16th wrench, and again, if you actually put your eye down and look this way, it's righty tighty, so that's going to tighten, and that's going to cause the neck to bush away from the strings. It's going to reduce the action, and then lefty, loosey, that's going to let the strings pull the neck up this way more. And what I discovered with this one, it wasn't actually the debris that was causing the issue. It was that the truss rod had been completely slacked, and so I was just... When I first put the Allen key in and was turning it, it was just turning freely and freely and freely. And I actually had to turn it stronger probably 10 or 20 times before it engaged. And now, just for a couple of quick turns, if I put it in, I can feel like it finds the spot. And right there you can see it wiggles a little bit, but, you know, not freely. So that tells me that it is engaged. And then I can with a, against a little bit of resistance, turn it just like that. And what I recommend at this point is just, so I just did two little turns and then I'm gonna take it. And at this point also I should note the strings are slacked because that helps give me more room. And it also means that I'm not pulling against the tension of the strings when I'm trying to adjust the truss rod. So I would recommend slacking them. And I can already see that the, tr the angle of the neck looks a lot better. And with this type of adjustment, oftentimes less is more. You don't want to go overboard. Now once I put the strings back to tension, they will gently pull. So from wherever the level it is now, the strings will pull it to a, a different level once they finally come to tension. But this is just look, just doing my sight test down the neck again, it looks much better. So at this point, I'm actually going to string the strings back up to tension. And then we'll keep our adjustments going from there. Alright, so now, 
that I've got the truss rod in a much better place, my strings are back up to tension now, I can turn my eyes to these bridge saddles. And this is kind of your fine adjustment. If you want to think of the truss rod as a coarse adjustment, uh, the, the, these bridge saddles are a fine adjustment. I also think of these as the, the ability to adjust to preference or to taste. You know, um, if you play a certain type of music or, you know, I, and this is all just very generalized, but if you're more of like a speed player in the shredding and metal, you probably want to have the action nice and low and fast because that is important for that kind of technique. On the other hand, if you're maybe more of like a, a blues player and you like to go for big bends, uh, you know, then maybe you want a little bit higher action just to allow the strings to really have freedom of movement. Um, I, what I'm doing, the, this, the, these saddles are too low for where we were at, given now that the truss rod is in a better place. And what this should do is it should el eliminate any of the buzzing we were having up here but also help me fine tune so this middle area is more moderate. And it's kind of a give and take between all these different variables. Now, to go back to the truss rod, I like it so that it's relatively flat with maybe a touch of bow. I don't really like it to have a, a back bow, but just a tiny touch of neutral. And then I like kind of a medium height for my saddles. And that's my main idea is actually when I'm bending... The way that my, so right now I'm pushing on the B string, and as I bend it up, I contact the G and kind of the D string, and I want, I, I get kind of fiddly about, you know, I don't want it to bend up like this and go, you know, if the action's too high, my finger will go underneath or it'll go into my nail, but if it's too low, it'll kind of pinch underneath. I want it to go into a little bit of the meat of the tip of my finger. That's just my own personal preference. But... Where I'm just basically from now, what I do is I've got my fine truss rod adjust, and I'm just going to sit and play the guitar for 10 minutes and kind of continually tweak. Now, the one tool that I really would recommend is this. This is a, from Stumac. It's a little cardboard cutout. Um, and I got this out of Dan Erlewine's book, How to Make Your Guitar Play Great. It's a little cardboard cutout. And what it has is... These, it's not a square, it has the radius of these different commonly used radiuses, neck radiuses, in, cut out in the cardboard. And this is a 9.5 radius, so I'm going to use the 9.5, and I could check it, I could push the strings out of the way and check it against the fretboard, but what I really want to do is make sure I match the radius of the fretboard here, so I, want, I don't want one of the strings to touch high and one to be low, I want them all to follow that gentle curve like this. So I'm just going to mess around with the truss rod using this tool and playing the guitar for about 10 minutes till I get it to a place that I like it. So a little update, it, I spent about 10 minutes just playing random things and taking my Allen key. I even did a couple adjustments. Um, I found I needed a little bit more tightening on the truss rod so I did it maybe two more times just to really get it di dialed in. And then I found that I was getting some, it felt really good in this part of the neck, but then up kind of in this area, there was some choking out where you would play a note, and rather than ringing out freely, it would kind of, zzz, like, kind of just die. Now, some of that is going to happen to a little bit of an extent. But that's pretty good. Now the higher you raise these saddles, the more you eliminate the choking, but then, you know, you don't have as low of an action. So it really is just kind of a, a fine balance point between those. So anyways, now that I've got it to a place that I like, I am going to take my radius card like this. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show you guys very effectively, but I've got my 9.5 setting. I'm actually just putting it right on the bridge saddles. And... What I can see when I do it is that the outsides are touching, but the middle is not. So that tells me that the middle, the G and the D, need to come up a little bit higher. 
So I'm just going to do about a half turn or a, maybe even a full turn. I'm just going to also do this A on this one, just half of it, so it kind of angles up a little bit. And also the G. I think I maybe did that one already. but So basically I'm just going to be going back and forth to give it just a little bit of tweaking. And then I'm going to pull out my card again, sight down the neck, and see if we're getting closer or not. And I can even put my finger here on the other side, and that there's it creates a shadow from the lights. That kind of tells me if I can see the shadow, there's a little bit of space underneath there, which I don't want. So I'm just going to keep messing around with this until I get it just right. All right, now I've got it in a place I think I like it. Again, I'm just letting, even letting it follow up and down the strings just to make sure it's sitting evenly across all of the strings. So now I'm going to give it a final tune. Now, what I really like to do, I mean, you can, I think you could call this guitar setup, but because I did a lot of truss rod adjustment, I kind of feel like it's important to let everything get to know each other. So ideally, I would let this guitar sit kind of overnight and then basically do this process again tomorrow. But it's, it's going to be a lot more subtle tweaking. A lot of the big tweaks are done, but I think that that will really uh, benefit just do, giving it a once over again, once everything is kind of settled, right? I mean, this is wood. Wood is something that can move and shift. And when it's being pushed against metal, right, it might resist it for a little while and then settle in. And, and just with the humidity and the temperature, all these things are moving parts. So I think it's important to kind of let it settle in a little bit. But as a whole, the guitar is in a definitely a much better place. I think it's going to be... You know, that feels really nice. Technique's kind of bad, but I'm listening mostly just to hear how things ring out. And yeah, I think we're in a great spot. So um, I'm going to come back and check this thing out again tomorrow. And then actually, I'm probably going to do a little tone test to show you guys how this guitar sounds. So hope you enjoyed watching the video this time. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. I'll see you again soon.